The Oliver Hazard Perry class or shortly the Perry class frigates have served since 1977 and they are still taking on crucial missions. The frigate, which has proved its worth in real combat, became a true legend by performing many firsts for 45 years of duty. Now we are investigating the Perry class, an excellent warrior and peace envoy. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares. The Perry class is undoubtedly the most successful frigate in US naval history. Although it was designed for secondary missions, this surface combatant repeatedly proved itself in frontline service. The frigate is not just a gallant warrior, but also a symbol of diplomacy. Perhaps the most fitting word for the Perry class is first. To better understand why the word first suits the ship, let's look at the history. Before 1975, the US Navy had defined the Brook. Garcia and Knox classes as escort destroyers. The term frigate had referred to the destroyer leaders. But after this year, the US Navy changed the classification of surface combatants. The escort destroyers have turned into frigates and destroyer leaders into cruisers. The Perry class was the first surface combatant in the US Navy designed and built as a frigate according to this new classification. This new class of vessel, which was initially defined as patrol frigates during the study phase, was reclassified as a guided missile frigate before it became operational. The initial mission definition of the Perry class was to protect the amphibious landing forces, supply and replenishment groups and merchant convoys from aircraft and submarines. But the US Navy also used these frigates as the element of battleship-centered surface action groups and aircraft carrier strike groups. The Perry class was the first ship designed by computers. The first ship of the class, USS Oliver Hazard Perry, was laid down on June 12, 1975, launched on September 25, 1976, and commissioned on December 17, 1977. Washington, which had initially planned to build 75 of these frigates, lowered the number to 50 due to budget cuts. However, later it approved building the 51st ship, USS Ingraham. There are two versions of the frigate, a short hull with a 136 meter length and a long hull with a 138 meter length. Australia, Spain and Taiwan also built the frigate in their local shipyards. Unlike US versions, the ship built in Australia have a sloping helipad and 2.4 meters longer hull. The Spanish models, defined as the Santa Maria class, are 138.8 meters long. The beam of these ships is 14.3 meters. The frigates built in Taiwan are defined as Chang'an class and have a length of 138 meters and a beam of 14.3 meters. The superstructure of the frigate was made of relatively less durable aluminum which has caused some complaints. In December 1982, USS Duncan of this class developed a 12 meter fissure in our superstructure during a storm. Also, it is reported that some other frigates have experienced the same problem. The ship has a 19 mm thick Kevlar armor on vital spaces. Besides, the engine room is reinforced with 16mm thick steel and the magazine with 19mm thick aluminum plates. The frigate has exceptional survivability. On July 14, 2016, a decommissioned Perry class ship, USS Thatch, was used as a target ship. During the live fire exercise, she was hit by four harpoons, two Hellfires and one Maverick missiles, two bombs and one Mark 48 torpedo. Still, it took 12 hours for the frigate to sink. Similarly, another decommissioned Perry class ship, USS Rance, was used as a target ship at the same exercise and sank in 5 hours after sustaining 22 missile hits. The Perry class is the first US Navy surface combatant whose gas turbine propulsion system also allows the ship's speed to be controlled directly from the bridge via a throttle. The propeller of the single shaft frigate has a lower impact on the bottom while a higher one on the top. Therefore, at speeds above 12 knots, the frigate's stern slides in the direction of the starboard. However, thanks to its auxiliary engines and advanced steering system, the ship can be easily controlled and has higher maneuverability. The Perry class can travel at 6 knot speeds using its two auxiliary engines. The ship creates air bubbles around the engine and hull to reduce the acoustic signature. The position of the 76mm gun causes large blind spots. It can be fired only from the sides. 
Therefore, while the ship is heading toward a target, it cannot open a suppressing fire. The location of the closing weapon system above the hangar also creates large blind spots and it can only shoot at the targets that are approaching from the aft area. The USA and Australia decommissioned these ships in 2015 and 2019 respectively. On June 13, 2017, the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral John M. Richardson, announced that the US Navy officials were currently looking into the possibility of recommissioning several Periclus frigates from its inactive fleet. But on December 11, 2017, the plan was abandoned due to cost problems. Bahrain, Chile, Egypt, Pakistan, Poland, Spain, Taiwan and Turkey are the current users of the Periclus. The complement of the Periclus is 176 person. The short hull variant has a length of 136 meters, a beam of 14 meters and a drought of 7.5 meters. The long hull version is 138 meters long. Its fully loaded displacement is 4,200 tons. Two 20,500 horsepower GE LM2500 gas turbine engines provide a top speed of 29 knots. The frigate can sail 8,330 kilometers, in other words, 4,500 nautical miles, at an economical speed of 20 knots. The RIM-66 standard SM-1 air defense and RGM-84 harpoon anti-ship missiles can be launched from the single-arm Mark 13 Mod 4 launcher. The frigate also has one 76mm single-barrel Mark 75 gun, one 20mm six-barrel Mark 15 Phalanx close-in weapon system, and two 324mm Mark 32 triple torpedo tubes. The RGM-84 Harpoon missile with a 222kg semi-armor-piercing warhead has a 124km range. Its maximum speed is Mach 0.86. The semi-active radar-guided RIM-66 standard SM-1 has an effective range of 38,000 meters and an effective altitude of 19,800 meters, in other words, 65,000 feet. The speed of this air defense missile with a 62kg high-explosive blast fragmentation warhead is Mach 2. The 76mm Mark 75 gun is the US license-built variant of Otto Melara 76mm Compatto, which has a rate of fire of 85 rounds per minute. It is effective against a surface target at 16 km and an air target at 8 km. The rate of fire for the Mark 15 Phalanx Closed-In Weapon System is 4,500 rounds per minute. Its effective range is only about 1,500 meters. Many users have equipped their ships with machine guns of various calibers. Australia had even integrated the Mini Typhoon remote control weapon stations with 12.7mm machine guns to its frigates, defined as the Adelaide class in this country. The Santa Maria class ships have the Marocca close-in weapon systems instead of the Phalanx. The Taiwanese frigates have additional two 40mm and two 20mm guns. The decks of these ships have been modified to integrate the Xi'an Fun 2 and Xi'an Fun 3 anti-ship missiles. Two Adelaide class frigates acquired by Chile in 2020 have an 8-cell vertical launching system. Generally, each of these cells houses four RAM-162 ESSM air defense missiles with 50 km range and Mach 4 speed. Similarly, the Turkish Navy has equipped four Periclas ships defined as Gabiaclas in this country with an 8-cell vertical launching system for the RAM-162s. Also, the Chilean frigates can fire the RAM-67 standard SM-2 with a 170 km range and Mach 2.5 speed instead of the RAM-66 standard SM-1. The combat career of the Periclas frigates began quickly. USS Clifton Sprague participated in Operation Urgent Fury, the US-led 1983 invasion of Grenada. But these ships got their true reputation in the Persian Gulf. In 1984, there was a balance on the ground front of the Iran-Iraq war. So, Iraq began to attack enemy's oil tankers to wear out Iran's economy and will to fight. When Tehran responded to these attacks, oil shipments to the world from the region started to interrupt. Thus, the US Navy deployed a fleet into the Gulf to escort tankers against the Iranian attacks. But the first major attack on US surface combat ships came from Iraq. On May 17, 1987, Two Exoze AM-39s hit the Periclas frigate USS Stark patrolled in the Persian Gulf. These missiles had not been fired from a combat aircraft like Mirage F-1, but a modified Falcon 50 business jet of the Iraqi Air Force. So the crew in the CIC of USS Stark could not evaluate the tactical situation correctly. They had assessed that the speed of the threat directed to the ship was low compared to a jet fighter and high compared to a helicopter. 
Therefore, the captain had not given the order to activate the countermeasure systems. When the USS ADAC radar became active within 10 kilometers, the crew of USS Stark realized that the frigate was under attack. It was now too late to activate the decoys and the Mark 15 phalanx closed-in weapon system. Although only one missile detonated, the fuel of the non-detonated Exosay also caused a fire. Despite the heavy damage, USS Stark survived the attack without sinking. In July of the same year, another Periclass frigate, USS Rance, bombarded an abandoned oil rig used by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard to stage attacks on the Persian Gulf shipments. Later, a helicopter from the ship landed a SEAL team at the oil rig to take it over. On April 14, 1988, USS Samuel B. Roberts hit a mine in the same area. Still, she managed to reach Bahrain by her auxiliary engines. On September 21, 1987, three US Army helicopters attacked an Iranian ship, Iran Azur, which conducted a mine laying operation. At least one of them took off from USS Jared. On April 18, 1988, the Perry class frigate USS Simpson, the USS Wainwright cruiser and the Knox class frigate USS Bagley destroyed an Iranian naval and intelligence facility on an oil platform. The next day, the Iranian command class missile boat Joshan launched a harpoon missile at the US surface combatants. The USS Simpson returned missile fire and hit Joshan. Later, the boat was sunk by the combined gunfire. After the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait in 1990, the USA sent the Periclass frigates to the Persian Gulf to fight once again. On August 18, 1990, USS Reed fired the first shots of Operation Desert Shield. During the 1991 Gulf War, USS Nicholas sank or damaged seven Iraqi patrol boats and destroyed eight drifting mines. On January 24, 1991, the helicopters, which took off from USS Kurtz, landed the soldiers on Kara Island to capture the Iraqi garrison. Also, during the Battle of Bubian Island, the frigate destroyed two mines, sank an Iraqi mine layer, and supported combat helicopter operations. The Periclass has also been a good envoy, which achieved many firsts. The USS Rands was a part of the US Navy's first historic visit to China in 37 years, in 1986. In 1992, USS McCluskey visited Vladivostok in the Russian Federation. She was the first US naval ship to do so after the collapse of the Soviet Union. In 1997, USS Estosin became the first US surface combatant to visit two Russian ports, Baltisk and Severomorsk, in the same deployment. In 2003, USS Nicholas entered Neum in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It was important because no other warship had visited the city since 1917. In the same year, USS Van de Grift became the first US surface combatant to enter Vietnamese waters since 1975. Another Periclass frigate, USS Gary, was the first US warship to visit Cambodia after the Vietnam War. The Australian frigates participated in many military missions, including the 1987 Fijian coup d'etat, 1999 Interfed peacekeeping mission, 2000 Solomon Island civil war, war in Afghanistan, and the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Besides, in 1995, the Adelaide-class HMAS Sydney became the first Royal Australian Navy warship to visit the Russian port of Vladivostok. In 2014, the naval ships of the Turkish Navy passed through the Cape of Good Hope for the first time after 1866. The Perry-class TCG Geddes was a part of the Barbaros task group assembled for this mission. Many users have tried to keep their Periclass frigates up to date with various modernization, but they are now outdated surface combatants and close to the end of their service life. Although its glory days are now over, the Periclass repeatedly proved itself as a successful frigate in war and peace and became a legend. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares.